Let's see what she's gonna come. <laughs> Y'all oh. remember Bundy Blue actually came to <laughs> to my um skincare uh release as well back in February. Hey Bundy Blue. Oh, well. <laughs> How you doing? That's as sweet in person as she is on social media just so y'all know like my mom loves her my management team loves her she is the same online and in person so i'm glad you came on today <laughs> girl listen when you was like i'm gonna let you have i was like i am trying to get dressed i was like all right i'm gonna put on my robe and i'm gonna come on hey, here because i do <laughs> thank you i've been seeing you working you, out and stuff i'm yeah. proud of you you want thank you you know i'm still waiting on my products now Oh, I'm supposed to send you some, aren't I? So you can review them. Yes. Thank you for my all it takes is a room. You know I be doing I, a lot. Just give me a little I know, reminder. I know you. And I got you. doing a lot. Yes, just, just a little reminder. <laughs> and and uh, my husband said he wants some more face stuff because he liked the face stuff. He was like, "Tell her I need some more face stuff because I like the face wash and all of that." Okay. I was like, "All right, okay. I'ma let her know." I got you. But. Not tomorrow. I ain't gonna lie. I gotta count a long day tomorrow, but Tuesday I'll ship you some out. All right. I'm looking forward to it. But you know, I want to ask you about this reunion, okay? okay? And I. I asked about Stormy because I want to know how you feel. Because you know I like Stormy, but mm -hmm. it is. <sighs> Stormy, don't be mad at me, girl, because you may see this, but it's giving thirsty. It's just a tad bit. Just just a tad bit. Um, because of the the whole I don't see destiny as aggressive. I haven't even seen the whole thing. But when I saw that part, I was like, so we gonna lie? That's what we gonna do. So I just I haven't I was, seen it yet. I ha I gotta watch it today. I gotta watch it today. She said that she don't feel like destiny is aggressive, and I was like, but she threw a chat at you. So. <laughs> okay. okay so how did, what, what's going on with you and stormy like are y'all cordial cool or are we like i don't fuck with her but i'm keeping it cute <laughs> so i answered that a little earlier when i saw you kind of type that i said y'all gotta make sure y'all watch the show because um you know you know we filming right now i think everybody kind of okay. knows at this point we're filming right now so y'all gotta make sure y'all tune in well you know i'm tuned in yeah. All day. Yeah. Um. Also, you know, everybody had something to say about how you were on a reunion. You know, oh, her attitude was stank and all of this. And I personally was loving it. I was well, loving it. I was like, this. let me ask you this. All right. So let's keep it a buck. So mm -hmm. you. So I was seen on the stage with people who have come for me for a whole year, right? Mm -hmm. Um, on, on the show and on social media, right? Mm -hmm. For a whole year. Own did a special talking about my accomplishments. Then people went live dogging that out, right? Like for a whole year, and they didn't have nothing to do with me. It was a social media episode that Own did, right? And they highlighted. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of little things that have happened. So my question for you is this: So the viewers saw me on the stage with people who've been coming at me for a year. You've seen me in real life doing the things I love doing, which is starting businesses, growing businesses, and being around people who genuinely care about me. Having seen me in that environment, what would you say? The environment of a natural environment, such as my skincare lunch party. You was there. I was there. And it was great. I had a good time. It was good energy. Thank you. I, look. Energy. I was dancing. Yes. Fun, taking pictures with anybody who wanted to take pictures or go live. Or and just not even just that. Like, to see you in the room, like, as soon as you come into the room, you work in the room. But it's not just that. It's the talking about the products and being knowledgeable and being personable. And it's just a lot of juggling at one time. And you always handle it so well. And to see that in person, I was just like, yeah, Mel is on it. Like, it's like... Girl, listen, you know, I put my reviews for the show behind a paywall because they love it. So I'm like, pay for it. Okay. Um... But in that, I was talking about how, you know, because they were doing this whole comparison with you and Sheree, oh, the upgrade, you know, and all of this. And I was just like, listen, let's not even do that. <laughs> listen, listen, Sheree looks great. And we're not doing comparisons and all of that because all women are, you know, have their own thing. But you are much younger and you have several businesses. It ain't nothing she by she ain't. Ain't nothing like that going on. So I was just like, I don't like when y'all do shit like that because you're really not paying attention if that's the type of comparisons you out here making. Like, 
Because Mel is on it. I'm thankful to God for everything that he's doing for me and doing in my life. You know, I just turned 37 in November. And um, I see, you know what I'm saying, literally how I was brought up out of a situation that could have. I could have came out of that, could have lost my mind, could have hurt people, could be in jail, any could of that stuff. So I'm be really bitter, fat. really like, bitter. Not for not this. Like, right. Real. Like for real, for real. Yes. Funny, you guys don't even know the number of people on a daily that I encourage, whether that's through the DM or that I see out in real life that I encourage, um, that I'm there for, that I help out financially. If my heart leads me to do that, once I yes. read whatever they got going on, like I do a lot of that. That don't, for me, everybody can say what they want to say, but that ain't bitter for me. Um, it's not. But, but I am, I will be honest, my face does, tell it all so if i'm in a situation and i ain't checking for it at the time you gonna know it ain't no i wonder if she feels some kind of nah, way. you're gonna know you're gonna know because yes. you're gonna see it and you're gonna feel that energy so um you know, and i'm not mad at that yeah yeah i'm not mad at that I don't at know all why are. i don't know why people are people act like they've never been in a situation whether it was work or around family or around certain friends or used to be friends that they don't care for and they ain't in the best of spirits because of that. Mm -hmm. That's just real life. So um, it's kind of one of those things where a lot of times it's damned if you do, damned if you damned don't. Damned if you don't. You know mm -hmm. I mean? So you can't worry about the people. That's why I say stay true to you. As long as you stand true to yourself, you wake up every day happy about the decisions you made, feeling good about the decisions you made. That's all that matters because people are going to always find something. To be Even if you mad about. Face and tell them the facts, they're going to find something something so you girl I, listen you know i already know and like watching you like through these past few years and everything like i can to me i can clearly see it like the the leaving you know the marriage and doing your own thing that's such a scary thing and i, I know so many women and people period that are going through that right now that shit is not easy and then to do even better and honestly i feel like that's what it really is the friend group are old head people a lot of people are old head people they want women to always be looking for validation in a man as soon as a woman is like no i'm good i got it i can handle it myself i don't want to do this anymore everybody wants you to say that no you miserable because you don't have a man that they can see right. you know and that's what i feel whenever you around everybody it's like they want you to admit that you miss being fucked over and it's like no she don't stop stop doing that I, like even earlier before i jumped in here oh i'm praying for y'all please stop praying for her to go back to somebody that mistreated her please stop hey, on the like, real, hey let me give it a buck i don't have somebody this was probably a year ago now but i had somebody dm me and say god told them something it was dealing with something and i said mm, well god didn't tell me that so <laughs> like no. i'll tell you something about me like no. what's going on we don't even know each other. How? People be overstepping no. their boundaries. Yeah. Like, they, way too much of overstepping of boundaries. But for me, straight up, I feel like when they try to make it seem like, oh, Mel, you know, she don't have friends because, no, 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 no. When you are a resource, people feel like they can use you and use you and use you. Yeah. And as soon as, you know, if you're a sensitive person and you always doing for people and you feel like they taking advantage and you start moving differently, they don't know how to take that shit. They yeah. really don't. They don't know how to take it That's and they have a problem right. with it and now you're the bad guy. You have to be the bad guy because you don't want to take mistreatment. Yeah. And that's what it always looks like to me. They wanted you to, you know, like even when Marcel was like, does Mel take accountability for anything? I'm like, nah, nigga, I know you not sitting up there talking about accountability like he's so funny to me because like he think he's so smart and i'm like nigga i could wrap you up like you so simple and you think you be doing the most circling the airport tisha makes you feel like you're smarter than you are and she know you're not that smart she just be sitting up there nodding her head and i'm just like poor thing we're gonna pray for her that's who y'all need to pray for well you know but i'm gonna let it go the thing is, when I have um, people in my life and in my circle, and y'all saw this from the beginning because it was discussed, um, I'm always trying to elevate them with me, yes. right? So first season, y'all saw, you know, I used to invite them out to get You was going to give it a blueprint. I, you was going to give it a blueprint. I them out to galas and, and, you know, wanting people to, 
you know, rub elbows with the right people. And I like to see people win. I'm going to keep it a buck. I do. Like, people in my life, I, I'm going to do all I can to make sure you do whatever it is you want to do and get to where you're trying to go. Um, but with that, too, if for some reason, and I'm going to say if because I have some people in my life who ain't never crossed me, and I ain't never crossed them, and we get along just fine. We don't have no arguments. We hang out. One of my homegirls was at my house the other day. We were sitting up watching the Black Adam, honey, that just came out with the, uh, the rock. With the rock. Mm -hmm. Watching, honey. So I have real-life friends like that, and mm -hmm. I like to see people win, you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. when I know you do personally, I know you do. I do. And whenever you show me something different, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to debate with you. I'm not going to do a whole back and forth with you. I just move on. I just move on. And we've got to start normalizing it being okay for you to move on. Um, when you think about it, we've been taught to hold on to things and people that aren't good for mm -hmm. us. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, everybody in the city know that man cheating, but they still want you to stay married to him, right? They still yes. want you going through. And as, as a woman, I know what all comes with that. The late mm -hmm. night crying, the depression, it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, But people would rather, instead of you moving on, want to sit, have you sitting around holding on to stuff. And it's just, it's like, because I've chosen to move differently in my life, that doesn't make me wrong. That doesn't make me a bad person. Because my thing will be sit down and show me where I have done something so bad to anybody up here that, hmm. that hatred spews like it does. Tell me. Like, I'm waiting. Like, I'm literally waiting on it. Now, well, you know, what it, people, you know what they I, think. You know what they think about, like, Okay, for instance, the biggest thing I think everybody goes back to is the Tisha thing. You know how I see it. I think Tisha started the shit. I think, you know, you throw your little jabs, you make your little comments, and you think I'm not going to say nothing back, and eventually I pull your card. And then I did it in front of everybody, so now I'm trying to ruin your marriage, when really, like, is it me ruining your marriage, or is it the truth ruining your marriage? And um, yeah, but I didn't bring that up, and this is another thing I think people miss and forget. You're talking about how many episodes, a whole first part of season one, and I never brought up or said anything about your marriage in terms of no kind of cheating of no kind, right? But then my ex has a conversation with your husband. Not me. Mm -hmm. He went over there and said, you got 20, 20 girlfriends. I didn't say that. But then you have a scene with me where you ask me about it. And even then, I'm like, figure it out for yourself because I don't want to have nothing to do with that for real, right? Mm -hmm. But then keep saying little things and keep coming. You think I'm just going to be silent. And that's really where a lot of that started. That mm -hmm. is where, before that, I had never even had a conversation about infidelity in that marriage whatsoever with either of them. Mm -hmm. I did not say conversation i end up trying to be made to be the fall guy on it but i ain't start that shit i ain't one checking for that i don't know it was a lot of oh okay so we're gonna keep doing this tisha we're gonna keep playing because to me i feel like tisha is one of those people and i feel like you can blame miss wanda she's unfortunately as beautiful and intelligent as she is mm -hmm. she is extremely insecure and jealous hearted and I think that Marceau plays on that. I think her mama play on that. And I think that, you know, when she see you, she saw somebody that had a lot of the components that she wished she had, but she couldn't help but to be jealous at the same time. And she couldn't help it. So to me, all the women on this show are some beautiful women, right? Yes. I think woman on this show, we got some beautiful women, some um, talented women in their own rights. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And yes. I'm also learning, you know, I'm 37. I'm still learning a lot of stuff too, but I'm also learning that sometimes that ain't enough. You know, like you may think, oh, we should get along well, or we probably be able to kick it off good because we all, you know, doing our own thing. And sometimes it don't, it's, it doesn't work like that. It's it doesn't. It's the okay. male identified thing. I, that's what I think the biggest thing is. It's the being male identified. So once you break out of the, 
<laughs> the mind warp of I'm going to protect my man and his image at all costs. Once you break out of that, everybody that's still in that mindset is like, no, we can't, you know, that's why I think the husbands want you to beef with the wives. I think they do because I don't think they want you to influence Tisha or Kimmy to feel like y'all really don't have to deal with this shit. Y'all know that, right? Like y'all really don't have to do this. Y'all don't have to be stressed out. You don't have to get an emotional support dog. You don't have to be, you know, going through phones and shit like you really don't have to deal with this shit they don't want them to feel the power of knowing that you can do all of this shit better without some nigga making you feel like you need him when really you make his life better and i feel like that's that's really what the the jedi mind trick of the men is like i think even with martel like you see a woman like yourself that is resourceful somebody that they can build with and they like that but they also feel like they have to control it and it intimidates them on some level so you know i think and i kind of clocked it from the beginning i was telling you this like the first season i was like oh he's jealous of you he's jealous of you it it was before y'all had even really separated you know and all of that and i was just saying it because i saw it he's jealous he wants to be as impressive as you, but he's not. He doesn't know how to do that. And everybody around him, because he's like a beautiful man and he's charismatic, nobody forces him to be any better. Mm. I think. I think his mom, the other friends, everybody that's, oh, Martell is such a great guy. Yeah, but he's also extremely manipulative and narcissistic and kind of cruel and, you know, does shit to Mel that I feel like, why are you doing even more damage? You've already fucked it up. Why do you have to then continue to, you know, want people to see her in a bad light just so you can make it okay for what you did? And that's what I constantly see. And I'm and I'm never liked it. And but like for instance. Me is this, what gets me is this, and this was when I say that's another thing I was talking about when I used to teach earlier, Bundy. And one thing I taught my students was how to think. I was mm -hmm. big on my students how to think, critical thinking. And yes. so now in this adult world of reality tv i look at a lot of things and i'm like dang people really don't be thinking sometimes right so my thing is this if i was so evil and so all of these things right y'all have seen for yourselves at this point even though i already know what was going on behind the scenes but you know people think i'm just making that up <laughs> right but now y'all are seeing for yourself through some of the little comments being made if i was so that why why do you still desire me why do you still want me? Hmm. If I was such an evil person with such a dark heart that you have to tell people if Melody's forgiving you, don't believe it, and all of these things. If I was all of that, then why, why are you want still me? for your ex-wife and for your family? I, I would be running out the damn door to never return in the way you'd be describing me to people. I'm Especially... Especially if you had cheated. Like when he kept saying, oh, Mel cheated too. Mel cheated too. It's like, okay, so why do you still want to be with her then? Because we know most of you niggas can't handle that. We know most of you niggas, if y'all found out that y'all wife was cheating on y'all, the way y'all cheating on y'all wife, y'all couldn't take that and wouldn't really want to stay with them. Like, if, also, you would have brought it up a long time ago. Why wait until she divorces you to want to bring that up? Like, yeah, it, it's, it's not a lot of like really thinking about the situation even with destiny and tisha everybody was at one point mad because they didn't have as much access to you anymore so if i'm such a terrible person why are you mad that we not friends no more <laughs> like so, explain it to me let me know where the critical thinking part comes in right mm -hmm. how does simple as the communication not being there for a month or two like it usually would be why does it hurt so bad or bother you so bad if I'm such a bad person? But I will tell you this before I get ready to go because I got to get my nails done, girl. But let me um, tell you this really quickly. Um, yeah, Jay Bowen said they got to be black tomorrow, honey. So I'm going to go ahead and get them. But um, let, let me say this. Um, I've learned about myself when I've sat down and just because I do spend a lot of time alone too, thinking, doing my spiritual growth and healing and all the stuff I need to do for me. Yes. I literally will pull back, right? Mm -hmm. I will pull back if something feels maybe a little something, whatever. Or even if I'm busy and my pullback happens, it allows people to show you who they really are. If you it does. Because you'll look at it and you'll be like, but I ain't even do nothing to you, though. 
oh, I just kind of stopped talking to you for a while, and then you wrote like this. You showed your hand. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And that's what yes. happens. I ain't gonna lie. That's what continues to happen. And it literally is not me doing nothing, but just falling back a little bit. Just fall back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it always, always comes to the forefront. It just always does. So there's nothing nobody can say that I've just so done to them. Mm -hmm. that. But then once that pullback happens and I see how you move, I'm gonna go that route. Yeah. You know? And that's a good place to be in to me. It's called intuition, first of all. Mm -hmm. And another thing, you know, people don't understand as a woman, you have every right to be selfish, not even as a woman, but as a person. Mm -hmm. You have every right to be selfish about your time, your energy, your space. So if I don't want to deal with somebody, I don't always owe you an explanation. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can just move how I feel, and that might be hurtful to you, but if you're not a fucked up person, then you shouldn't respond fucked up, especially yeah. if I didn't do something messed up to Girl, you. Just give me the space. Or if you didn't just say a word. In a, if I... <laughs> Listen. <laughs> in, I can't say what you just said, but boom, shaka laka, pass the collection plate. We gonna say amen. All of that. All of that. Because real talk, if I ain't did something messed up to you, you ain't gonna move in a messed up way. And me just pulling back, not talking as much, is not... It's not me doing anything to you. Right. But, you know, people, if you start, people, hey, you start moving a certain way. Now, I'm gonna people go. are entitled. Girl, now you just said a whole word. You just said a whole word. Listen, it. I'm going through a lot right now, girl. You know, we in these mid 30s and, and you know, shit just be going on. <laughs> and yeah. it's been well, a lot going on. Encouraged. You got to say encouraged too. And the one thing I used to tell mm -hmm. myself as I was going through my stuff, I was like, one thing that was big for me that I used to always say is God is my source. God mm -hmm. is my source. And I used to say that all, all the time because what people don't know is when I left, I didn't leave with anything. I didn't mm -hmm. leave with anything. I was out. Didn't know what tomorrow looked like, the next week, none of that. But I knew that God was my source. We weren't even filming right then because of COVID when I left. We right. weren't filming no more. So, right. Literally, okay, so like, girl, what you going to do, you know? <laughs> but I know I ain't going to stay over here. I'm going to figure something out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so one thing I used to always tell myself is God is my source. And then also, I said, what I'm going through, and this is what I'm going to share with you, what I'm going through, okay, my ancestors have gone through. That plus worse. So if they survived and made it through, then I'm going to make it through this. Yes. And Pull, I'm for real. I yeah. began to pull from the strength of my ancestors. It's a real I, feeling, yeah. Come on, come on now. It's a real <laughs> thing. We're not, we not about to give up. We're not about to stay in no. no place. We ain't about to stay in no place that ain't God. God meant. So come on, and that yes, I'm gonna encourage you to do. Period. Absolutely. Listen, I'm I'm in the coming over the hump portion yeah, of yeah. it i got my meditation and my hot yoga and my boundaries okay yeah. <laughs> like you definitely have been one of the women that's inspired me along like this journey of rediscovering myself because you know i've talked about it before but like i, I lost myself in my marriage yeah. Yeah. and you know my husband is a good guy but it's still like a difficult thing to try to figure that out in the course of still being married to someone and so we're in this space of trying to figure that out and still trying to grow together and it's not always comfortable it's like uncomfortable conversations and it's just a lot but whenever i would see you and how you were moving and the things you were doing for yourself and your business and all of the the spirituality and the you know the self-help all of those things i was always inspired that mel is doing it you know i see somebody doing it and taking care of themselves and you know being connected to you in the way that i have been you've always been like in inspiring to me and super sweet and that's why you know i go up for you because i i feel like i know you in a way that i don't care what nobody's talking about you're not going to make me feel like mel is some fucked up person because i personally have been around her and have seen her growth in her life and i don't know what nobody else is looking at like <laughs> i don't get what they got going on but you know i fuck with you heavy so yeah i know and i'm proud of you I am proud Thank of you. you. Like 
I've been watching you, you know what I'm saying? Been seeing you, rediscovering yourself and all of that. And it's beautiful to see, you know, so from Thank one you. to another, I see you and I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yep. Same, same. I'm going to let you go get your nails done and I'm going to get dressed because I'm cooking. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. okay. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Okay. All right. I'll talk to okay. you. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. For everybody who's been buying a badge, 